It's one of the most ambitious building drives in history, as India fast tracks its way to prosperity. But the boom has spawned a vicious illegal trade. We've seen someone there. We're just a bit reluctant. It's a really kind of hairy situation, and we're not sure it's really safe for us to go any further. Crime gangs specialising in environmental destruction. The assailants came down from here, uh, yeah? This is the room. And, and this is the room. They came from this side yeah. and shot and my father. It is not allowed. And prepared to kill anyone in their way. These are the native fishermen of India's biggest city. Kohli men who have fished Mumbai's Tane River for generations, long before the city became India's financial hub. It's so polluted, the fish stopped living here long ago. <laughs> But the men have found a new livelihood, fishing for sand. These days, mining for sand is almost as valuable as mining for gold, thanks to a massive construction boom. The men free dive for about two minutes at a time, as many as 200 times a day. What they're doing is illegal and dangerous. They don't even have a safety rope when they go down. And of course, no diving equipment. They dive down 40 or 50 feet without equipment for eight hours a day. A lot of them die because they get swept away. These are tidal creeks. Um, There's strong tidal currents. Sumira Abdulali is on a mission to expose the powerful people behind this black market trade. A network of organised criminals who run illegal sand mining across the country. This operation is a very modest example, and Sumira considers these fishermen not as criminals, but as victims of what they call the sand mafia. At the very lowest level, there are people who are completely helpless and who are, for the sake of a livelihood, are suffering great hardships and human rights violations to execute the sand mafia's agenda. This is probably the largest scam ever in our country. This is a part of India that not everyone gets to enjoy. More and more people are moving to the cities and the construction industry is booming. In the next 10 years, it's set to be in the top three in the world. And that's why sand is India's new gold. Sand is the key to the construction industry, which employs more than 35 million people here. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has promised to build the equivalent of a new Chicago every year. That will take colossal amounts of concrete, and for concrete, you need sand. It's not just a problem here. Globally, demand far outstrips the legal supply of sand. But India is one of the worst offenders. With so much money to be made, riverbeds and beaches are being plundered, with the mafia stopping at nothing, including murder, to get the sand.
Samira Abdulali became aware of the problem more than a decade ago when she discovered sand was being stolen from her local beach, a boat ride from Mumbai. Oh, yeah, so you can see where it's just... The land's gone. This yeah. is where the a major sand mining was yes. happening right here, was it? Yeah. Yes. So you can see that the beach itself used to be at the height that that land is now. And uh, the whole level of sand has dropped by about 10 feet. 10 feet. It, 10 feet or more. And they would take away sand in trucks. They would cross this creek, which you can see at low tide. And bullock carts, I mean, tens of bullock carts at a time every day. And now it's just gone. Yeah, they've really destroyed it. They've really destroyed the it. Haven't you? Yeah. There's loads of sand in the desert, but this is the sand that they need for construction, isn't it? So this is the special sand. This, this is, is the, the special sand because yeah. when you look at the sand, you, I mean, if you look at it closely, you know, it sticks. You yes. see this? It yes. sticks. And the reason is that this sand has an uneven particle size, and that's what makes it stick and, and gives strength to a building. If you take desert sand and do this, you'll see that it flies nice apart. Yeah. because it's very rounded, the edges are rounded. Samira was told she'd have to catch the culprits red-handed for authorities to take any action. So she did. She used her own car to stop a truck driving out from the beach. They bashed up the car, broke everything. They hit all of us. They broke my teeth. Um, I still have headaches. After that, I was my hand got paralysed and I had to be in hospital for a bit. Taking away large amounts of sand can have catastrophic consequences. Destroying farmland, causing floods, landslides, and contaminating groundwater. We've come to Bundelkhand, a drought-stricken region in central India. Life's a struggle here at the best of times, let alone when your land is being destroyed by greedy sand miners. Local farmer Bridge Mahan Yadav has been fighting them for years. Was this his land? Has this been, this has been destroyed? His first encounter with the sand mafia was when they came onto his land in the dead of night to reach the riverbed. And the trucks just come straight through here. In the months of the year, when the road was destroyed, the main road was destroyed, the main public was destroyed. The main road was destroyed, so people had to get rid of our land. They had to get rid of it, so they had to get rid of it, and they had to get rid of it. So how has this river changed? over time with all this sand digging, this mining? This river was going from there. It didn't go from our fields. When the mining was completed, the road changed. No, the road came straight and came straight. And when the road was made, the whole river was going from there. The whole river was going from there. The whole river was going from there. Like there was a lot of water coming from there. The whole river was going 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 from there. और भी बहुत किसानों के साथ हो रहा था, लेकिन कोई अपनी आवाज नहीं उठा पाता था, क्योंकि वो इतने प्रभाव प्रभावशाली व्यक्ति थे कि उनके साथ पुलिस थी, उनके साथ शासन था, उनके साथ शासन था। And so began a fight first for his land and then for his life. He was contacted by people from a nearby village who he thought wanted to help him. Instead, they ambushed him. उन लोगों ने मुझे जबरजस्ती किडनैप करके एक एकांत जगह में ले गए। ये सब चीजें मुझे मुझे मारते थे, पीटते थे, मुझे प्रताड़ित करते थे कि तुम ये बंद करो, बंद करो कि इन्हें बरोगने जिंदा नहीं छोड़ेंगे, मार देंगे यार। तीन दिन तक मुझे यातनाएं दी और तीन दिन की यातनाएं देने के बाद उन्होंने मुझे छोड़ा, कहा कि अगर ऐसा काम करोगे तो तुम्हें दोबारा � it's a long, lonely battle. We want to film illegal sand mining, but it won't be easy. There's a near blanket ban 
on unlicensed mining across India imposed by the Supreme Court. But in remote rural areas like this, it continues with impunity and is often the best paid job going. We move under cover of night because as a foreign TV crew, we really stand out. We're taken to an area where the locals say there has been sand mining recently. Suddenly, we see lights up ahead. Oh, they're just right there. There's something coming. There's a car coming, yeah? Go back, go back, go back. So that was just a truckload of sand that's just gone past us, which is almost the proof that we need that there's illegal sand mining going on here. Whether or not now we push forward and go further, deeper in here, which could be quite dangerous, we'll have to now have a talk about and decide whether it's safe to actually push on into here. We can see the lights, that's where the mining's going on. But they'll, they'll so is it safe for us to go further on in here? It isn't. The car won't make it, so we go in on foot. We've seen someone there. We're just a bit reluctant. It's a really kind of hairy situation and we're not sure it's really safe for us to go any further. And so I think it's safer for us to go back to the car and see if they approach us. Is that, so here's another one coming, yeah? Is this a tractor coming? Now aware of our presence, the workers begin to scatter. It's empty. <laughs> it's time for us to get out too. So the motorbike. It's following us now, is it? Yes, there's a motorcycle following us. And there was this point where they were sitting under, you know... Waiting for us, were they? Yeah, they were yeah. Waiting, for they're waiting for us. I think they're probably trying to make sure that we are really leaving. When they're sure we're on our way, we lose our escort. There's no, there's no number on the number. Can you see there's no number on the bike? We can film no more tonight. The next morning, we're back. The sand thieves can be brazen enough to work, even at this time. And sure enough, we catch one red-handed. Is this the boss? The tractor driver calls his boss, who arrives with an entourage. Truck owner? Mm. At first, neither man is keen to talk. Eventually, they tell us they know what they're doing is illegal, but they don't have much choice. We're told that each night there are approximately 20 to 25 tractors like this one, loaded with sand, making up to three trips per shift. By the time everyone gets a cut, there isn't much left. Inspector, 
It's clear these men aren't the big money makers. They're from the lower rungs of the mafia. The extent of illegal mining in this district can't be hidden. Day after day, these trucks line up, ready to take away tons of sand. We count about 35, and we're told this is routine. The central government leaves it to local authorities to enforce. We decide to pay a surprise visit to the district magistrate in charge of the area. I'm Samantha Hawley uh, from ABC Australia. We've come here to do a story about sand mining, the rampant sand mining that is taking place across this district. लेकिन अभी बिगत पिछले वर्ष में माननीय हाई कोर्ट ने माननीय हाई कोर्ट ने इस पर माइनिंग पर रोक लगा दी है पूरे प्रदेश में रोक लगा दी है और इस कारण से इस समय जनपद में माइनिंग का काम बंद है। Why are you saying there's no sand money when there's clearly sand money? ऐसा है कि कोई चोरी छिपे अगर कर रहा होता है तो हमें सूचना मिलने पर हम कड़ी जांच करा के कड़ी कार्रवाई करते हैं और ऐसी बात नहीं है कि जो सैन्य मानी हो रही है कोई आपको गलत फहमी भी हो सकती है। But what about the sand mafia the farmer told us about? डरने की कोई बात नहीं है यहाँ पूरा लाइन राडर सिचुएशन इस वाइट कोड और नथिंग माफिया no mafia. Many of those who've been drawn into the fight are reluctant activists. Hi, Thursday. Thank you so much for having me here. Akash. I really appreciate it. Akash Chauhan lives with his family in the place yeah. they've called That's home is, for uh, generations. Where your father was killed. Can Four you years ago, his father was shot dead down. here as he took an afternoon nap. And the assailants came down from here, uh, yeah? This is the room. And this and is the room. They came from this side yeah. and, and shot my father. In here? And ran away. So he was this lying side. in this room, yeah. asleep, yeah? Or he was sleeping? He was sleeping in this room. Three men, known to the family, entered their home and shot Palaram Chauhan three times. So this is where your father... The 52-year-old had dared to complain to the police about the local sand mafia who were destroying communal land. I was in the hospital and I saw my father's dead body there. So that moment, that scene, I can't say anything. कभी नहीं भूल सकता वो आज भी मेरे आंखों के सामने एजिटेड आता है। You can see the bullets cover। No, the bullets have gone straight through। Yeah। Yeah। उनके चेस्ट पे गोली लगी हुई थी, उनके चिक्स पे गोली थी, फोरेड पे गोली लगी हुई थी। कुछ पॉइंट है, पॉइंट्स ऐसे हैं कि माइंड से स्किप नहीं होते बिल्कुल भी। बार-बार माइंड में वो घूमते हैं। Akash is prepared to name the accused mastermind. A man who will soon encounter at uncomfortably close quarters. तो मेरे पापा को धमकी दी है कि एक हफ्ते में जब तुम साइड हो जाओ और नहीं तो एक हफ्ते में तुम्हें तुम्हारे परिवार को ठिकाने लगा देंगे और उसके एक हफ्ते बाद ही पापा के साथ यहाँ से हो गया. A year later, Akash's brother, a witness to his father's murder, was found dead near some train tracks. Police have refused to investigate. Akash is adamant he was murdered too. A simple Google Maps search reveals the extent of the destruction. The white patches mark where the land has been stripped of sand. Okay, thank you. Akash agrees to take us there. Okay, thanks. Why are you doing it if it's so dangerous for you? I'm doing this for my father. If we stay here, we're going to be 
start filming there, will they try and stop us or...? Definitely, try? definitely. Very valuable land for, yeah. for us. Akash takes us as far as the fields his family own, but it's not safe for him to come any further. We go on and find the sand mining. We film openly. We have an audience, but they seem harmless. But before long, a more threatening figure appears. It is not allowed for here. What is not allowed? Yeah, illegal. It is illegal. Oh, this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Why is it illegal? It is not allowed. We have come face to face with the alleged murderer of Akash's father. This is Sonu, the man we're told runs this illegal operation. He comes from the same village as Akash, and he makes it very clear we're not welcome. He is not attack you. Right. Yeah. Yes, I am standing here. It is not to attack you. Attack you? Uh, no. As foreign journalists, we're unlikely to face any violence from Sonu, a protection not enjoyed by his fellow villagers. Not a legal operation. The people who were in their time, I have kept them as a result. I have seen their case. I am watching them. और बाकी जो इलीगल सैंड माइनिंग चल रही है या जो भी कुछ हो रहा है इलीगल स्टोन कस्टर मशीनें चल रही हैं उसके अगेंस्ट मेरे फादर भी थे मैं भी हूँ मेरा पूरा परिवार है The problem is that no one knows exactly how much illegal sand mining is taking place and how much money is being generated Conservative estimates put it at more than 250 million dollars a year others go much higher and if anyone does get caught, the fines are negligible. And you can see the sand right here, and this is definitely fresh sand. Yes. Samira Abdulali, the woman we met earlier on Kihim Beach, spends her time trying to gather as much data as possible. It's a dangerous job. After photographing illegal dredging, she was almost run off the road by someone she thinks was trying to kill her. Yes. You can see that this, this um, boundary isn't very Secure. No, I can see a part of it was missing there, yes. Yes, and we were both driving. He suddenly accelerated and he tried to hit me from the side. And just about here in the middle of the bridge. There's a really long drop yeah, there. It's, it's a really, really long up. drop. So I just very sharply braked and he hit me on the side and the front wow. rather than straight on the side, which would have toppled us over. I mean, in the heat of the moment, you don't feel terrified, but now I feel terrified yeah, when I think about it. Yes. Nearly seven years later, Samira is still fighting to have the people who attacked her that day brought to justice. Illegal sand mining is the dirty secret at the heart of India's booming economy. But there's little political appetite to deal with it. There's strong evidence that police and other officials are often paid off. But Samira believes that if the government wanted to do something to control the sand gangs, it could. The answer would be so simple. It All it requires is, to, is to, to gather data as to how much sand is required for construction and to figure out where it's coming from and to make sure that there are declarations of this raw material in every building project. It would also help if the Indian government enforced its own laws and protected the ordinary people trying to uphold them. But the future looks bleak and the sand is running out.